Hi, my name is Joseph Kim and I want to show you how to create curved wooden fins today. Uh, let me just show some examples and you know we use wooden fins or slats and it doesn't have to be wooden actually and it could be uh, some sort of plastic or made out of metal and it could be cladding finish, it could be interior finishes um, the idea is to create sort of uniform repeated shape throughout so you kind of give this sort of feeling and it can be soft and it could be gradually changing into something um, for simplicity sake today uh, we may be looking at something a bit more uniform uh, but you'll see what I mean in, in a couple of minutes so and this is another example and perhaps it could be furniture as well um, the same methods and um, the, this uh, tricks or perhaps just a sketchup method uh, could be used for furniture design it doesn't have to be just architectural cladding interior finishes um, exterior um, anything that sort of repeats and uniformly changing and I say changing because um, it's not linear um, it's something perhaps uh, curved um, so uh, perhaps you can start off like this and get um, and narrow and narrower um, as it carries on so let's get to it um, so let me just delete this one I'm gonna set out an area where I think it is reasonable um, 8.4 meter grid in this case so 8.4 so give that that as a group and I'm just gonna repeat another one next to it uh, so we have a space so perhaps the fins could um, carry on that way and perhaps start out wide here and then narrows out to the end um, and could be seatings inside and uh, maybe it's just a uh, like a restaurant or a food court area where people are just um, sitting inside and eating um, so after that, uh, I'll, what I will do is I'll make a sphere. Uh, there are some tutorials available. Uh, perhaps I can do one too. But um, and here's how to make a sphere. So just take that center point and then up. And I'm not so concerned about measurement in this case because I'm. I'm going to be scaling this anyways, you can if you want to uh, so let's just center this um, notice um, I'm trying to minimize the use of any plugins or extensions uh, for this uh, just because I think understanding uh, the native methods and native tools are more important before you sort of jump into the plugins perhaps I can do another uh, video where um, you're using extension or plugins to accommodate a lot of complex shape but in this case I'll try to minimize the use of extension minimize meaning less or none perhaps so I can just sort of scale that um, uh, it's blue because it's been reversed and that's just my template there so um, some sort of torpedo shape uh, and I think it would have to be a bit wider so you're just really molding it so that um, you can get the basis of this shape uh, maybe around five, six meters or so. Okay. 
So maybe you can start out, you know, a bit narrow here, widen out, and then get narrower towards the end. Um, um, in my in my idea, there's huge loss of space there, but I'm not going to worry about it uh, for this demonstration. So um, that's what you can have, um, actually. And then I'm just going to make the same copy of it and paste in place. So or I have two of it, and I'm going to make the other one slightly smaller. It would be helpful if I have x-ray mode. And this, this is sort of the inner side of the fins. So the difference between two sort of determines the thickness in between. Now, um, the reason why I do this because this method could be carried on for different things like the furniture and other stuff. Um, for example, if you look at this, it's sort of empty there in that area, but you can certainly have that filled and have different lighting effect in there. So it depends how you how you want to do it. But in, in this case, um, uh, I'll do a case where you have a thin slats uh, as opposed to something that's been carried out uh, to fill that space. And so. Uh, those are your two um, shapes. Turn off the X-ray mode there, and then we need the slats. Um, so let's just um, yeah, and then I'm just going to make that stand up. Telling me to go to work. <laughs> uh, so, um, maybe they're spaced out. Um, something like, um, I would say maybe the space in between the slats are about a hundred mil. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that's a safe guess. Okay, so a hundred mil in between, and then each slats are, are say uh, twenty or thirty mil thick. Let's do twenty, and see what that looks like. So, hundred and twenty mil there, um, and then that's repeated a thirty times. Ooh, so that will be a lot. So in this case, um. And just to cut down the size of the geometry, and um, let's do 240 mil apart, and then maybe we can do 60. Is that color? Nope. So 80. So already we got a lot of slats um, to modify. So, and um, those would be my slats, and what I would do um, is I'm just gonna explode all of this so they're just raw geometry, and then um, I can use the outer side to intersect with uh, these um, sort of the bases of the fins. Now this can stay as a group. Um, I've seen some cases doesn't want to play nicely, uh, but let's just give it a shot. So this one stays a group, so I can easily delete later, but the slats would be not a group or all exploded. So go here, ignore all of these uh, different menus. Um, what you're looking for is intersect. Um, intersect faces, yep. So with selection, 
So basically what it did was it just struck a line where they meet. Um, so I can delete the other one. And let's just take a look at what I've got here. Um, so I've got this sort of cut out. Now I can work off of this. Um, but I'm actually interested in this inner piece here, not, not this outer side. So I can um, delete that. So uh, that's what you have there. Um, and then I can just select everything together. And the same thing, right click, intersect the selection. So it's just sort of struck the inner side there. So if I delete this, I'm still going to have this sort of thing inside. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and um, clean that up. Uh, let me actually lock this um, face that I made for the area so that I don't accidentally delete it. I don't typically use lock feature, but um, I think this would be easier. This is a case. Um, I'm just cleaning up uh, sort of access edges. There are plugins to do this. Um, so, so what I would do is I'll do um, something along the line of. No, actually, never mind. It's not these. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, that's not seen between. Okay. Good, now I have to delete this. Um, you can just kind of look at it dead on. Um, the tricks that people usually do in this case is camera, center views, maybe top, bottom, front. Nope. Uh, I realize the back, if I don't select it correctly, it, it will disappear. So let's just do the long way. Um, so I'll just select, delete, select, delete, select, delete until the very back appears. Theoretically, I can be doing this, um, was it 80 times or less? Click, delete, click, delete. Oh, okay, you see the end of it. Click, delete. Delete. I want to make sure I don't accidentally delete what I need. Maybe that's the last one. Yeah. And should I have deleted the last one? Yes. Okay. So I'm actually not interested in these lines going across. I'm using at least two. It's difficult to select these edges. Right, I've seen people trying to click this and click that and hit delete. That's more difficult, accident prone. And let's go like that with the uh, eraser tool. Um, yeah, uh, I think that edge, these edge um, in between is something that we don't need. But in this case, uh, we don't have to worry about it because you select it like that and then make it a group. So once we go in that group and we have all the fins we need, and then we can actually go select everything, deselect that one, and effectively we've excluded the rest it besides those edges hit delete so we have this fin here now it's just a matter of push pulling this uh, to give it a, some sort of thickness and then um, and then you can just have it as a fin really. and so I did say 20, but let's say 40 in this case. 
So in order to do this, you just double click it, all of them. So you can be given a thickness to all of them. Or, yeah, I did say, uh, I'm not going to use plugin, but um, just to show you. There's a amazing plugin developed by Fredo, uh, Fredo um, Joint Push Pull Tool. And if you just do this and then type in something like 40 mil, enter, nothing, and double click, and then we'll just calculate all of them and give it a thickness at the same time. Now I'm thinking I should have gone slightly higher in height of these things, and if I were to scale it now, um, they won't have sort of correct looking thickness, uh, but I'm going to do it anyways because um, I don't want all of this to kind of go waste. Um, so select this and then just stretch it higher so that people can actually go inside and perhaps um, I can triple click this one, make it a group, and then adjust this separately so that, you know, people can actually enter without bumping their heads into it. Um, so that sort of um, changes that you can make. So for example, and maybe the second one is slightly wider. I'll hold down control key to do it about center. So you can start to change it, um, but your basis of the form is there. I think you just may have to um, change the first couple just so that people can enter or altogether you actually get rid of the first few. So let's hang out to that one. And then delete. That way, you know, it's a comfortable space for you to walk in without pumping your head. Um, it's all uniform. Now, if, if you want something undulated, uh, then you can also do the same method I did, just kind of scale it. Uh, but if your initial shape, uh, the, sphere, the stretched sphere, or um, if you use uh, some other plugins um, available, you can mold the shape so that you end up with something more complex and perhaps you can integrate a bench inside or uh, a bit more um, undulating surface that's more interesting. Um, but I just wanted to do a, a short uh, tips and tricks for developing this. So I hope you enjoy and perhaps um, learn something so you can uh, further develop.